If you are a new mum or an expecting mum, you probably already know that motherhood is quite a wild ride. It's wonderful and amazing, beautiful and kind of scary. And today we wanted to share some of our top tips for new mums. If you're new here, my name is Jenny and I am mum to a seven month old baby girl called Georgia. So these tips are just based on my experience over the last seven months things that I've learned, things that I wish I knew before I had her, and things that are just I didn't expect. So our first bit of advice is to take all advice with a grain of salt, or a big dollop of salt. Even the advice we've got in this video, every single baby is different, and what works for some people might not work for others. So you really have to take that advice and just see what you want to do with it. People do love to share their advice with new parents, they want to share the thing that worked really well for them or the thing that worked terribly and you should avoid. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that same thing is going to apply to you. That advice might be completely useless to you. And I've also found that as well as every baby being different, every stage of your baby is so different. So I've had it a couple of times where I've heard some advice and thought, that's bonkers, I'm not going to listen to that. That seems impossible, my baby would not cope with whatever it is they're advising me to do. Then a couple of months later, I'm like, oh, actually, that makes sense for my baby right now. It wouldn't have worked then, but actually now, maybe I could try that and see if that works. Because your baby is constantly changing, constantly developing. So what works at one period won't work another. I've had some things work one week and not work the next week. Your baby changes so quickly. And also, sometimes people just give kind of weird advice. People are weirdly negative about babies when you have one. For some reason it's very weird i don't like it maybe i'll do a video about kind of bad advice people give to new parents what i would recommend is that you just choose who you take your advice from choose who you let speak into your life and don't let that be those people with those really negative opinions and negative advice that is just bringing you down and making it so much harder for you our next bit of advice is that feeding your baby is a wild ride a very wild ride when my baby Georgia was first born, we essentially went through all of the different kind of ways of feeding her. She was breastfed, she had pumped breast milk fed by a bottle, she had formula at some points. Basically we went through all of the different feeding things for various different reasons. And to be honest, all of them were hard in different ways. There wasn't a particular easy one, although I think breastfeeding is probably the most convenient and longer term is probably easier but by no means was it easy at the beginning it was really really tough and to be honest i don't really know how you can prepare for this before you've had a baby and i know that's kind of useless advice but it's such a difficult concept to imagine when you're not going through it there are even certain things where looking back i can't quite remember what it was like i can't quite imagine what it was like and that's something that i went through myself and i still struggle to kind of wrap my head around it so if you're coming into this for the first time, it is a tricky concept to get your head around. So my best advice here is just to educate yourself, listen to other people's stories, speak to other people in your own life who have gone through breastfeeding or other types of feeding and just find out what they did, what struggles maybe they had, what helped them. Make sure you feel confident in whatever choice it is that you're making about feeding your baby. I think confidence and open-mindedness are really helpful when you're going into this new journey of feeding your baby and working out what works for you and what doesn't. Be open to trying new things that people suggest, but also being confident that whatever you've chosen is what you want to do. Our next tip is that there is just so much stuff that you do not need. Before my daughter was born, I watched a lot of videos about kind of newborn essentials and things that you need and things you should buy and all these stuff. But in reality, there is so much of that stuff that you just do not need. And there were a lot of things on those videos that we ended up just not getting. Partly to save money, partly because we just didn't really have the space. Georgia doesn't have her own nursery or room to like have all this stuff in. So we didn't end up getting like a lot of furniture and that kind of thing for her because we just don't have the space. There are of course things that make things easier for you and things that you might like to get. And of course there's nothing wrong with having those things. But if you're worried about needing to get all of these different things for your baby, you really don't need everything that these people talk about. What you really need is somewhere safe for your baby to sleep, some way of transporting your baby in your car. If you have a car, you obviously need a safe car seat for them. You need a way of feeding your baby and you need nappies and some clothes for your baby to wear. 
and that's kind of pretty much it everything else kind of makes your life easier maybe gives your baby something to play with and look at but especially in the newborn phase there's so much stuff that you just don't need yet and that's another good point is that even stuff that you do need or you want you don't need to have everything ready on day one right when baby arrives you can buy things as you go along and to be honest we found that a lot more helpful for example we didn't buy a push chair for georgia until she was about five months old mostly because we did not have the space for a big push chair with kind of the bassinet and all the different parts and we just didn't have the space for something like that in our house so we just did baby wearing for the first five months of her life we had wraps and slings and carriers and that was amazing that worked really really well for us and it also meant that at five months when we decided that we did want to get her a push chair and it would be particularly helpful by that stage it meant we really knew what we were looking for what we wanted what would work for us far better than we knew before we had her and there's been other things like toys and books where we've been able to kind of see what she's interested in and what she likes playing with and then by that rather than making all these assumptions before she was born about what she might or might not like our next piece of advice is to know the difference between mum guilt and conviction and I've heard a lot of people talk about mum guilt and how difficult it can be and the impact that it has on them and their well-being and of course that's a real problem and can be really challenging for some people that can be really hard on themselves but we also need to be careful not to swing too far the other way because as Christians we also believe in conviction in God's direction and discipline so when we're feeling a certain way about something that we've done maybe or not done we need to be careful to discern what it is that feeling is. Is it mum guilt? Is it just that sense that we're never doing enough and we should always be doing more? Or is it direction from the Holy Spirit that actually this is an area that we need to get better at or we need to focus on? Because we're not perfect, none of us are perfect parents, so we do need to be listening to God's direction in this area. But we do need to make sure that it's God that we're following, not guilt. Our next piece of advice is that everything is a phase, literally everything. There are really good phases, there are really hard phases, but your baby's changing so quickly, especially as a newborn, and even now at seven months, Georgia is still changing regularly. Once we think we've got into a routine, then it changes a couple of weeks later, if that. And of course there are different phases for sleeping, maybe you have a really good phase where they're going down for all these lovely naps and sleeping really well through the night and then that changes and suddenly it gets harder and they won't go down in their bassinet or whatever it is. And then you get phases when it comes to eating where they just for some reason don't like lying on one side and you have to turn them on the other side instead for feeding. Or there could be phases where they're going through some kind of illness or developmental cycle or whatever it is. These different phases of their life can be really positive or easy kind of phases or quite difficult challenging phases but all of it as I said is a phase it all passes every difficult thing that we've gone through we've got through it doesn't necessarily feel like it's gonna end when you're in the moment but it does end and I found that really helpful to remember when I'm going through a difficult thing just looking back and thinking well it was difficult three weeks ago and that passed this one will pass as well and it's also worth noting a phrase that I've stolen from Abby over at Emma's for Mama on Instagram and what she always says is hard is not the same thing as bad and that's so true just because you're going through a really difficult phase doesn't necessarily mean everything is bad and everything is negative things can be really truly challenging and difficult and so hard at the time but you can still find so much joy in those times you can still find gratitude and praise for God and those are the times to turn to him and lean on him and this idea really helped me to make sure my mindset wasn't thinking this phase is really hard so my baby is doing something bad I didn't want to think in that way that it was a negative about my baby I wanted to think yeah this phase is really challenging this is difficult maybe I need help maybe I need to turn to someone but actually that's not a negative on my baby that's because they're going through a new development or they're learning how to sleep for the first time that's a big challenge actually this isn't bad this is just hard and our next tip is to pray this probably shouldn't really come as any surprise on our channel we love to talk about prayer here but one thing I wish that I had done more of at the beginning of Georgia's life is praying just finding that time to pray for myself for her for my husband, 
for us as a family I did do some prayer and kind of that was in there but I wish I'd done more of it really focused on that in some of those more challenging times making use of some of that time when I was feeding her and it was really difficult or when I was trying to get her off to sleep sometimes. Actually, I think I should have been leaning on God so much more than I actually did at that time. So I would really recommend that you do dedicate some time to prayer, whatever that looks like for you. You don't need to wait until your baby is asleep or quiet or anything to pray. You can do it while your baby is screaming. In fact, it's kind of helpful when your baby is screaming to really turn to God during those times, as hard as that might seem. Find those times to pray and really lean on God. If you are a parent too, let us know down in the comments what are your top tips that you'd like to share with new parents. And if you found this video helpful, do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from me and Arnold. And if you are struggling to find time in your day to pray, do check out this video that we filmed all about prayer tips for busy people. And we will see you next Saturday for a new video. Bye!